Hi, my name is Krzysztof. I'm a backend team leader at MageSuite. MageSuite is an open source suite of extensions that we use internally to develop e-commerce projects. Today, we'd like to show you a presentation that shows how we approach development process using MageSuite. The goal of this presentation is to show you how we approach front-end development of our projects using MageSuite as a base that constantly evolves. Let's just briefly talk about our approach to project development. As mentioned earlier, we treat MageSuite as our base for all Magento 2 projects in the company. This base is constantly improved and polished. Important part of our daily workflow is evaluation of project requirements. During such evaluation, we decide if requested feature can be implemented universally and then used by other customers, bringing them additional value. If so, then we implement it in MageSuite. There are several obvious and less obvious benefits of such approach. The more universal features we have, the faster we can develop project using already implemented and tested code. Costs are also lower. Most of our time, we only have to style generic features according to shop design, and of course, develop project-specific features. Also, constantly introducing new functionalities makes our solution more feature complete over the time. And when new features are introduced, every customer can benefit immediately. Last, but definitely not least, having common base makes our developers more flexible. They can easily support any project development without long introduction into its code base. Obviously, there are drawbacks with such approach. Sometimes we have to introduce some breaking changes. And since nobody is perfect, we sometimes do this by mistake. When such case happens, we're not able to adjust all projects immediately. And since we need to deploy regularly, we rely on semantic versioning and version locking mechanisms provided by Composer. Then we're updating all of our projects on a regular basis to align them with the newest code as fast as possible. The next question is how we maintain this structure. Magento 2 is a very extensible platform. Extensibility is its core feature, but it still has some limitations. Over the years, we found our ways around these by introducing custom development techniques on top of Magento 2. There are two main rules we follow during development of new features and projects. First, overwrite templates only when it's absolutely necessary. Second, Implement features that can be customized either using XML files and merging mechanisms provided by Magento, or by SAS variables when it comes to styling. For the rest of this presentation, I will show how features are implemented according to those rules. To comply with those rules, we are rewriting core Magento PHTML templates to make them configurable using XML. Configuration is achieved using view XML file and block arguments defined in layout files. Following example shows usage of configuration defined in view XML file inside PHTML templates. Similar code can be found all over the place in MageSuite. Above code is responsible for rendering HTML markup used by Ajax add to cart functionality. As you can see, we can easily turn on and off this functionality and it is done without the need of template overrides. In this example view XML file, you can see that our base theme has this feature turned off by default. But we can easily turn it on inside project theme only by overriding variables. With such approach, we are avoiding template overrides and our base template can be easily updated when new features are introduced. We no longer have to worry that projects have to align their overridden templates all the time. For more information on how we use Vue XML in all parts of our code base, please see our presentation that describes this topic in more detail later on. Vue XML option is used mostly for blocks and components that are reused multiple times in different pages or sections of the same page. Changing anything in it is global and cannot be easily adjusted for specific parts of the shop. So second approach aims for templates that are used only once per page 
and uses block arguments. As you can see in this example, we are checking if quantity switcher label was defined for a block. If so, then we display it. By default, we are not displaying any quantity switcher label at all on product detail page. This is how Add to Cart section looks in default Mage Suite implementation. But as you can see, we can easily inject this label inside the project theme using layout XML files. And this is the result when project theme is used. Another way of customization is done using SAS variables. In our base theme, we are defining some generic variables with default values. Those are later on used by other components across multiple SCSS files. This is how product tile looks like with default variables values applied. We can override specific variables inside the project theme, but at the same time, using import, we preserve all other defaults defined in our base. And this is how above change affects display of our page. Blue color was changed to red one using only three lines of code. Last part of this presentation will show how we deal with product tiles. Product tiles are the most basic building blocks of any shop. They present the most important pieces of information about a product and can be found on product listing pages like category or search results, recommendation car results, and many other places. Let's take a look how situation looks in clean installation of Magento 2. First of all, code that renders product tile markup is placed directly in templates in Magento 2. It means that whole template has to be overridden in order to make any customization possible. In consequence, more work is required when update of Magento happens. We have to align all templates to possible changes in core. Code repetition is also an issue. There are multiple templates where product tile rendering is implemented. Our solution greatly improves over default Magento solution. We use one code in all templates, avoiding any unnecessary repetition. It's implemented fully using XML layout file that provides extensibility for projects and third-party extensions without a need to override templates. Just like Magento layouts, we follow approach of building structure using containers and blocks. Our implementation of product tile is divided into multiple smaller parts that we call fragments. Basic layout includes badges, gallery, product name, price, stock availability, and add to cart section. In this example, you can see how add to wishlist link of product tile is defined purely in XML. It is very simple to add any new element to existing structure. Now, let's imagine our shop does not want to show add to wishlist link. With default Magento 2 approach, we would need to override all necessary templates. With our solution, we can just remove a block. Let's take some real life example. Almost all our shops require some kind of custom badges that are closely related to their business specific domain. Here, we can see little badge that indicates that this product is meant to be bought for dogs. With our approach, we can easily define new block and dynamically add it to existing tile. No template overrides, thus no worries when we want to update or optimize other parts of tile in Mage Suite itself. So that's it. I hope you've learned something during this presentation and we highly recommend checking out Mage Suite on GitHub. It's free and open source. Don't hesitate to contact us for more details. Thank you.